So my robot boxing game prototype has been coming out nicely, but there's still a ton of content and features to add before I can get anywhere close to a game that can be playtested. The one thing that has been driving me crazy though is how blocky the robots look and how dead the arena looks. I mean, it's like a complete wasteland. In this devlog, I'm going to be giving the robots an awesome new look, upgrading the visual effects, adding some new attacks, and even adding a cutscene attack move that ends up looking pretty cool in the end. Now there is a lot to add in this devlog, but as always, if you want to suggest anything to add and stay up to date with the game, you can join the Discord in the description or search Circuit Clash in the Discord server search. So one of the biggest things I wanted to get done before releasing this devlog was remastering the current robot model. The current model was made all the way back in 2020 when I first had the idea for Circuit Clash, and it has a very distinct block look to it. This model doesn't really represent what I want the models in Circuit Clash to look like, and I wanted something that was more high quality. Now I started by using Mid Journey to try and generate some ideas of what I wanted the newer robots in game to look like. Now there were a lot of concepts and it was difficult to decide what approach I wanted to take. Eventually I generated a concept image for a robot arm that I definitely wanted to use with this remastered model. So I contacted a talented 3D artist to help work on the final 3D model for the arms. It took a few days to get right and a couple of changes here and there, but eventually the artist came out with this model. It looked great, and I really liked the style behind it, but it was only an arm, and I needed an entire robot model if I wanted to make the most of this devlog. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and try my best to quickly learn 3D modeling and create the new head, torso, and legs for the new robot model. Now this model would essentially serve as an example of what I want the other robots to look like in-game. I wanted this model to look menacing and strong, but faithful to the signature features that the old model had. Now it took nearly an entire month to finish modeling the rest of the bot since I was learning along the way, but eventually I did finish the torso, then the legs, and finally the head. All the models looked great in my opinion, and I couldn't wait to put it all together. Now one small challenge I found when importing these remastered models into Roblox was the fact that the original robot rig I made was actually quite short and wide now that I look at it. The arms didn't even reach the waist, and the bot was pretty wide and didn't have much height. So before I could import this new robot model, I had to play around with the proportions of this model to actually match what most of the robots in the future should look like. Now once I did this, I was ready to import the rest of the model. It took a while, but eventually I finally got everything into Roblox. So now, I'd like to introduce you to the new and improved Circuit Clash prototype robot. I know, he looks pretty awesome, right? I decided to name this bot skin Sentinel, since the bot is pretty heavily plated and has a knight cross on the helmet, so I just thought the name was fitting. The model came out great, but of course there's still a few weak points in the model. For example, the legs don't really have any visible joints that connect to the torso, and the back of the torso also looks pretty plain. So someday I will get a 3D artist to fix up these small issues I made, but the model definitely looks ready to do some testing with. I know some people will really miss the old model that I used in the previous devlogs, so I do plan on including the old model as a skin in the future, possibly under the name Retro Sentinel or something. Now the complete model was actually finished about a week before this video you're watching came out, so that means during most of the development earlier in this month, the new robot actually wasn't complete. So during the development, we ended up with a monstrosity that kind of looked like this. We wanted to test the new models we had, which was the torso and arms, but the leg and head models weren't even complete yet. So if you see this guy during some of the video, that's just because we didn't have the models ready yet. But anyways, probably the most important thing I needed to add that I've honestly been trying to avoid for a while now is multiplayer support. But you might say, Reggie, don't be silly, Roblox already supports multiplayer. And yeah, that's definitely true, but the way I made a lot of the systems in the game, they're made to work with a player versus an AI. The minute I decide to replace that AI with a real player, things start to definitely break a bit because the code I made was made to specifically work with an AI. So I did a bit of cleanup to the code I made in the last video to make everything make a bit more sense, and also added some new impact animations which were given to me by a talented member of my Discord server. After cleaning up the code, implementing multiplayer took a lot of trial and error. The biggest problem I was having with making multiplayer work properly was just getting the animations to still work with the other player since the original animation code was made for an AI. 
Even after getting some of the animations working, there were still a lot more issues that came up, some of which just made no sense at all. It definitely took a while to fix things. Now if you watched my last devlog, you'll actually remember that I mentioned the absurd amount of animations I had to make, around 40 animations just for impacts. Well, I actually solved that issue. Kind of. A fellow Roblox developer in my server gave me the idea of using Roblox's built-in IK system to simulate body impacts. Now if you aren't sure what IK is, IK is essentially a system where you can define where you want a body part to look or move, and the system will try and calculate how that body part should move based on the position you provided. Now I actually never thought of using this system, and it worked pretty well when I first tried it, specifically for head impacts. I experimented with the system a bit and tried it on different body parts on the robot, but I found a few small problems that would prevent me from using it from replacing every single impact animation I needed to make. For example, sometimes the IK system would overwrite the actual bot animation, and I'd end up with some pretty weird looking behaviors. So I decided to stick with the system for head impacts, and it ended up working pretty nicely. However, I did still need to make the animations for all the other body parts. Pretty much, I only eliminated about 12 of the animations I needed to make for the head. So, I had to make the tough decision of deciding to always have the players facing each other so it wouldn't be possible to hit the back or side of the enemy player, at least for now. Maybe in the future when I get some more animators, I'll go through the efforts of adding multi-directional impact animations. But even though I got rid of most of the animating I had to do, I still had to manually mirror all the animations to make sure that they looked right with the other player. Now this process doesn't take too long, and it's only a few buttons for every animation, but it would be nice if there was a more automatic approach. Now, I also had to do something called replication, and it's a big factor in implementing multiplayer. Now, if you aren't a Roblox developer, replication is essentially where anything that happens on the server side of the game, like effects or some certain animations, need to be shown on the player's screen as well. I needed to make replication code for the impact effects as well as the new IK animations. It took a few days to get done, but this made the overall fighting experience a lot more enjoyable and synchronous. I also planned on having a small little impulse that pushes the player back whenever a player hits you, but that required a lot of replication code, so I decided to postpone it for now. Now, let's get into the new attacks, which is honestly my favorite part. There are three new attacks that I added with this update, a hook, an uppercut, and a new cutscene special attack. The hook and uppercut were fairly easy to implement and were made by one of my talented contributors, and was just a matter of adding the animations and the inputs for them. Now, we have a total of four base punches that the player can use. The jab, which is a mid-distance fast-paced punch that's made to be an opener for new moves. The cross, which is a hard-hitting long-distance punch that can deal some good damage. The hook, which is a heavy-hitting short-distance punch that can be brutal up close. And the uppercut, which is a devastating mid-distance punch with a longer wind-up but higher damage. These four punches will be the main punches in the game, and they give a lot of diversity in how you can play. Several variations of these punches will be made in the future so that you can develop more interesting combos with them. I'm really excited to get into the combo system for this game and figuring out how to make the game take some thought to get good at. But now that we know all of those base attacks, let's finally take a look at the cutscene animation. Now this cutscene attack animation still actually needs to be implemented into the code of the game, but a talented animator who recently joined the contributor team made an amazing cutscene animation where the attacking bot throws a flurry of punches and finishes off with an uppercut. It came out great, and I honestly can't wait to include it in the game. Now one thing that I've kind of been neglecting for a while is mobile support. I know in my last devlog I said I'd be focusing more on mobile support, but it turns out I got pretty distracted with the new robot model and all the new animations I had to add. So during the last minute of recording, I did go into the mobile support area of my code and started adding some things to make sure that everything was up to date. Mobile support isn't too difficult to add, so it's pretty easy for me to go in at the last minute and just add some things to make sure everything works. I heard a lot of people suggesting that you should be able to move the mobile buttons, and that will definitely be an option in the future of the game. Now the final thing I wanted to go over before wrapping things up was color customization. You might have noticed in some of the clips I showed, this robot over here has an interesting color scheme, and so does the original bot. This is because I decided I'd add some code to test out the player customization system. While I'm testing, I can go into the explorer on the side and change the color of player 1 and player 2 to whatever I'd like. This gives me a good idea of what color customization might look like and work in game, and I'm really happy with how the system is looking. Now in the actual game, you'll be able to customize the color of each part individually, but for the sake of simplicity, I decided to make every single part colorable in this prototype. 
So that's essentially it. These updates took a while, but they helped me bring my game to the next level and prepare it for some bigger changes like dodging, health mechanics, and knockdown mechanics. These systems will definitely take a while to implement, so I'm not sure when the next devlog will actually be out. Hopefully it won't be too long, but you can absolutely join the Circuit Clash Discord in the description if you want to stay updated. I'm usually Reggie, and I'll see you guys in the next devlog.